Sean. You're watching my channel Shopworks. Uh, I'm going to give you a slideshow on what I've done to this dump truck to date in order to get it to where it is. And uh, we'll be using that for picking up and going with some more videos on uh, other stuff like adding a tarp and actually switching this F Super Duty into a four wheel drive. And I built this dump truck out of at least three different trucks and a lot of other parts and at this time it's not currently yet a four-wheel drive but it will be in the near future you'll want to stay tuned for some more episodes of that and uh, I'll tell you how it was built so John my dad was on uh, Kijiji there looking around and found this box he knew I was wanting a one ton -ish dump truck for a while and uh, we went out and got the box, made the guy an offer uh, that he accepted and I couldn't refuse not taking this thing back. It's a 11 foot box on a frame, he's going to make a dump trailer with it, still has the hoist underneath it and everything you see in these pictures here basically, uh, pretty much a functional unit if a guy had hydraulics. Once I secured the box and had it back up at the shop there, we went and I found a F Super Duty. It used to be a rollback tow truck. The frame was longer than I needed, but it seemed promising. I always wanted the F Super Duty. I really liked the old body style Fords. They have some class to them still. You don't see too many of them around up in this area, and when you do, they're definitely worth some money. So I ended up going down. We picked this up and brought it back after some trials and fun trying to get it loaded on the trailer. Uh, motor was seized and there's some issues with the frame and we had to patch some of that up. The frame was stretched too long on the truck. I had to take some of that out. You know, see some of this up in more pictures. And I cut out, cleaned up and repaired the pieces of frame at the back of the truck box. I started working on the, uh, or the back of the truck frame and I started working on the truck box. And it was pretty much working up there by myself so it was a little bit fun. The frame was a double frame on the new truck and the donor was a single so I had to rechange the bracketry that the hoist mounted on because the frame was wider. It was uh, a little bit of fun. Never been much for a truck with tail lights recessed in there so I went and started welding up all the holes and cleaning up rust getting ready to cut a bunch of ovals in there. We patched up a bunch of tears in the box as well as fix the tailgate up a bit. You can see the, the holes coming around there with the ovals. And sanded down, painted the cab. It's uh, fairly rough. It's a work truck. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time painting cab and doing body work. I'm more interested in getting the hoist on and functioning. I figured I'd stick with the 11 foot box as much as I wanted to cut it down and I still ended up having to shorten the frame which is a good thing because there were some cracks in where whoever the wrecker was lengthened it. You can see the way the box sits on there how much we had to take out. It uh, was a test fit I had that box on and off uh, quite a few times throughout the whole process. Makes it easy when you can swing it on with the hoe. Gives you a little bit of an idea. The wheel wells there at the back were just full of little pinholes everywhere. So we'll cut both chunks out each side and put them in. You can see where I ended up cutting out rust holes by the wheel wells there and added some bumper bracketry on the back as well as a new mount for the, the hinge and did some more cutting and patching found a lot more rust in here than I thought down the one sidewall ended up having to cut it right out and repair it with two new pieces the other side was okay I drilled some holes in it so I could flush water through to get all the dirt out uh, top rusted through where the sideboards go and it was filling up with dirt and then holding water and rotting out. Tacked it all up and back in, stitched her together, ground her down. 
Again, just want to reiterate, it's a work truck for me, not really a show truck. You can see where the, the frame was having issues here. It was the double frame. They added in for the wrecker. Ended up having to section it, not the way I wanted to, but due to taking out what they installed, uh, it's actually the way they cut the frame too, was vertical. I needed to take out exactly what I needed and that was the only way I could do it so I reinforced it with some fish plating later on when I installed the box and the hydraulic tank as well as having the double frame. So when I cut the frame out completely I ended up putting it on a bunch of screw jack stands so I could be able to level it all up and put it back together there at the end splice it together with the right geometry. drug the cab back with the floor jack and leveled everything back out with the screw jacks again and started putting it back together. I put a six inch overlap on that frame and I was able to use existing frame for the plate uh, for the double part of the frame. It's been a while since I did it but I believe I took out 43 inches of the frame to make it to be where I wanted it to be which was pretty much what they added in when they put the roll back on it. You see how the box lines up nice with the cab now. There's about the right amount of space in it. And actually starting to look a little bit more like uh, what it should be here. And then I added the underbody box mount and the hydraulic tank. And when I installed those, I made sure to use some half inch plate to reinforce the, the frame as well. Because like I say, I couldn't do a, a frame splice the way I would have wanted on a 45. To add in a little more integrity there. I figured a half inch fish plate would be more than plenty. As you can tell in further pictures there it's uh, definitely taking a load. So I started working on a hydraulic circuit using a pump I got from a junkyard and I wanted all electric solenoid valves in the cab so a guy can not have to get out of the seat. So I wanted to have the end gate open with the hydraulic ram, the hoist tip like normal up and down and I also wanted an auxiliary circuit on the back if I wanted to run any other uh, attachments, a pole tamp or whatever, log splitter, you get the idea. So the stainless steel tank here, this was an auction special, I had uh, weld a bunch of holes up in the wrong spots and cut in a uh, little bit better setup for what I wanted to do, change the bungs around and ports and that's why you can see a bunch of grinding done all over this. Ended up having to fill about a four inch hole on the side that faces out on the driver's side there. You can see how it was mounted with the C-channel tabs so it actually sits down and it holds the weight from the bottom. Again, fish plated the back side of the frame at the same time when I was building the mounts. So with the engine being seized in there, I stumbled across this beauty. It was a 7.3 diesel power stroke and I pretty much picked it up for scrap price. It was my engine donor, cranny donor, uh, transfer case, front diff and uh, I'm sure I stole some other parts and pieces off there I can't think of right now. Because I wanted to make this a four-wheel drive, I ended up using the regular springs on this F Super Duty and putting the Dana 60 underneath the front. Uh, truck gained about six inches on the front, so I had to make the back appropriately as well here. And to do that, I ended up using a combination of lowering the mounts on the back and putting custom-made lift blocks in the back there as well. I definitely wanted some heavy-duty ones, so I made my own. These blocks were made with 3 8 plate and 3 by inch and a half rectangular tubing as well as the bump stops there with C-channel and angle and glued all together. You can tell here I'm 6 foot 1 and that's the height of the truck now that the suspension's been leveled out and equalized on it. That's where it sits plus your 10 inch sideboards and I'm done with it. I started putting the tank back in, got the valve bodies mounted on there and an aluminum plate for the fill and 
all the other parts and pieces plumbed in that I needed. You can see the back where I spliced the frame up on there with the fish plating, as well as my mounts for the tank. So I started working on my hitch on the back there. I wanted something fairly strong and stable for towing. And I needed to also brace in my drops for my shackle mounts there for the back after lowering them down. And uh, you can see what I did here. Try to strengthen it in as many directions as possible. And it's so far turned into a well designed hitch. Been very happy with it. Added in my fuel tank filler mount. Needed to keep them up without having the box support them as the box tips up. I also added some supports on the top side for the side rails, the sideboards. There was nothing in the middle and I thought 11 feet was pretty loosey goosey. I've been jumping around as parts and pieces show up and are available and whatever I can get done I try to get done at the time. I ended up with a bunch of connectors for the hoses and the bulk hose so I was able to bring it back to the shop and prefab everything to the length I need, mark it with a sharpie and then return it back to the hose company here, local company and they crimped them all for me. I put a new serpentine clutch on the hydraulic pump, it used to be a V-belt and I started going through the motor and redid the o-rings on the fuel rails and anything I saw that was leaking I changed. I also went through and put an electric fuel pump set up on this one as well. Got rid of the fuel pump in the, off the cam lobe. I had to patch some spots in the floorboard that were rusted out. You can see where I brushed on some good primer there. That's a two-part epoxy. And I did the standard rest of the interior with the foam and foil. It seems to deaden the sound. The tar always breaks down and falls off on these, so I just scrape it out and relay it with that. And I tore into the turbo. The turbo had uh, some obvious signs of dusting on it. I had a, another impeller off a different build there. I changed out and went through and did the seals and parts and pieces inside it. Had a peak on the engine. Pistons looked good and cylinder walls looked good. I didn't do anything there. I checked a couple bearings under the caps while I was at it. You can see how the fuel pressure regulator is plumbed in here for the electric fuel and painted the inside of the fenders with a rattle can just to go with the blue appearance. The outside was all done with a two-part epoxy Endura. I ended up putting the engine back in here with the water pump that was on there. I didn't splurge on this one for the filter. It's something I figured I'd do at the time when it's leaking. Another one in a box for when that time is. Well with most of my builds the engine tranny is one of the last things to go in and I usually end up having to run a bunch of extra wiring for different switches and potential switches and accessories down the road as well as for the hydraulics. I borrowed this winch bumper off one of my other projects when I was wheeling a lot and had uh, ag tires on one of my other trucks there with shortened down wheelbase. I just needed a quick bumper that was heavy duty and uh, wanted a winch so that worked out well. I also decided I'd never have another dump truck without steps on it, at least a small one ton where you're in and out of the box all the time. Uh, I used to landscape for another company and that was a pain in the butt. So I built this fold up set of stairs for it which has been invaluable for climbing in and out. I cut in a whole bunch of switches in the dash, like my other trucks. And I needed that for light bars and the controls for the dump box and solenoids. I also wanted a cab protector. I started fabbing that up. Uh, still not done with everything I wanted there. Still put a, a tarp set up on it. That tarp setup will be in a future video coming up. I have the parts, I just haven't had the time. This bumper here uh, was open on top. I want something to stand on, work on the engine with the truck being so high. Uh, had some leftover 
checker plate from something else I cut up. Uh, put that on there. Uh, you can tell a lot of my stuff's been repurposed or fabbed from scrap laying around basically. Running boards were off another truck as well. The injectors that were in there, you can see the rust on them. They're, that's why the, the diesel wasn't wanting to, to fire there. I'd say all the injectors were sticking. I ended up changing them out with the old ones out of my crew cab when I put the baby swamps in. They're not the best shape, but for what I'm doing, basically using this around the shop there, it uh, gets me by. I was working on this project at the same time I was working on that uh, crew cab of mine on and off and I needed the gear ratio. I figured it was easier to swap the, the diff out. I needed 410 gears for my crew cab and uh, I needed 513s I believe for this. And I ended up pulling it out and swapping for the single rear wheel front end so I changed the outboard parts on it but once I'm in, in it I always go through and I check the bearings for the stub shafts and everything. So they were a real bugger to get off on this one. I got all the hoses crimped and got them put on with the valve body blocks and routed them all where they should be and that's what it looks like before the solenoids are put on. Uh, I got a couple pressure reliefs in there and different pressures and you can see different colored and I, I rode on everything there so I knew which hose and which end went where. Had the truck out and painted the frame that you can see easily. And uh, used some Raptor liner, shot the front bumper there real quick. Just masked off the flare lead and the winch. Ended up sandblasting and shooting the box as well as the other parts pieces, ladder, uh, rad supports, uh, all that stuff there, got the same treatment. And it's starting to look like a blue truck, minus the hood. I've got a bunch of hoods there and sort of work on them as I need to. You can see the boards, side boards, I had to do a little cutting and shaving and put them in. I wanted a little bit of color so I gave them the silver I used quite a bit of. And, uh, Gives them a little bit more weatherproof and durability until you smoke it with uh, skid steer and uh, start all over again. With the body pretty much buffed up, I went in back and stuffed the truck back in the shop for a little bit and finished working on the engine, the fuel pressure end of things there, running a 6 liter fuel pump. Uh, I've been using these uh, air compressor splitters for most of my branching off for the fittings there. They're cheap and easy and you can weld them to just about anything. And uh, I wanted that four-wheel drive pretty bad. So the problem is with that F Super Duty rear end designed to take that weight, it runs a driveline brake. There's no e-brakes on that. Uh, driveline brake had to be attached back onto the four-wheel drive transfer case. Uh, it uses the same mount as the transfer case so I had to build an adapter to adapt between the two. It's uh, a little bit of fun doing that. So right, wrong, or indifferent, I don't have the, the R&D budget that, say, Quigley or Marmon Harrington has that do these kits. Uh, I figured it was easy just to put a adapter together in here with a spacer. Uh, you knock the tail shaft assembly off the transfer case, and there's a seal in there, so I had to come up with a way to seal that up. All in all, I believe I had about seven and a half inches without crawling under and remeasuring. Ended up getting two plates cut out and I had some aluminum tube and clamped it up and buzzed her together with the welder. Made sure it was square and ended up having to offset things to make it work for the bolts and bolt holes. And sort of seeing some of these pictures how it pieces back together. Ended up truing the faces off in the lathe, uh, parts that matter, and putting the seal in. And, uh, clean that up. Seal's been working out quite well. So is the brake assembly. Uh, so while I was into that adapter, I pulled that transfer case apart, being I had no history on it. Uh, I 
ended up it was a good thing I did. The oil pump was wore through on the case and bound up and trashed. And there was scoring on the shaft. I ended up putting some JB weld on it and turning it in the lathe there to make a, a good finished uh, surface again for the new oil pump and I ended up welding the tab on it as well. Got the truck outside, you can see the crew cab in the shop there and been buffing both of them up together on and off. And we got the step installed after paint, put some reflective marking on it. You can see the LED ovals everywhere. I'm really a fan of putting LEDs on anything, especially nowadays when they're so cheap. So I had an opportunity on a job site that I was working on. I figured I'd take the truck out and use it out there and test it out and make sure all the frame and additions and everything's definitely rated for what I was doing. I can tell I'd never haul these loads down any municipal or highways. They're well overloaded. But I was just running around on site. Figured I'd test it out and see what the box and hoist and everything's capable of. I ended up uh, taking it home, doing some trees and using it around up at the, the shop there cleaning up old trees as we're moving things around and dumping firewood thanks for watching and uh, to see more of this actually done in a video now that i decided to start videoing it please remember to like and subscribe and uh, see what all i'm working on